So, hi, David. Hi, Zach. Good to see um, you again after quite a while. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? I, how long has it been? Oh, God. Um, oh, a couple of years. Because we were on... A couple of years, that's right. We, yeah, we were on Calvin Bell's course, weren't we? That's right. About, Christmas, uh, Christmas which, a couple of years ago, I think, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, domestic abuse risk assessment. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was 2019, I think. I think that's right. November, I think either October or November 2019. Yeah. Yeah, it was Time October, I think. The virus, hasn't it? Sorry? Yeah, it was about, is it pretty much exactly two years ago? Right, okay. Yeah. I was looking at my diary the other day. Right. Um, so, David Eggins, can you yeah. um, give us a little bit of uh, your story, who you are and yeah. why I'm talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, I worked for the first half of my life, well, career, I suppose, rather than life, because there was a bit of life before that, as a teacher of languages, and ended up in special needs education, uh, working with groups of eight adolescents, really. Um, and then the government's policy became one of integrating disabled adolescents into standard schools, which was, you know, a, a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. um, but the difficulty was then that from the position that I was in at that time, that would have meant had I been promoted to principal of a college, I would have then been making um, teachers redundant. And I thought I didn't go into, I didn't go into teaching with the view of making people redundant. Um, and so I stopped working as a teacher. Um, I'd gone, I would say, pretty much down a one-way street. I think that would be the way to describe special education. Mm. And um, joined Relate. I'd always been fascinated by what went on in couple counselling. And I undertook there, uh, when I gave up playing rugby at the age of 40, um, couple counselling training was, in, was in, a, in rugby. And so I thought I could replace one kind of game of rugby with a different kind of game of rugby. So that was what I duly did. I went off and trained to do that, which was fascinating work. And so that was prior to leaving education. Mm. And then for five, six, seven years, then I worked as a couple counsellor mainly uh, until about 1994, when a pretty obnoxious woman, Sandra Hawley, who was head of refuge or CEO of refuge, a uh, refuge organisation, um, came and talked to a conference in Northampton 1994 and said violent men are all the same and they won't change and the couple councillors that I was at this meeting with were aghast to hear that message because we already knew that women were I would say equally able to be violent with men and you know similar kinds of problems I would have said although the statistics at that time were saying only 4.7% of uh, females were, um, that, that domestic violence only involved 4.7% of females, so a very small number. So after that meeting, um, a colleague and I set about writing a programme with the main aim of helping men change their behaviours. So that was coming from what we knew and understood as couple counsellors. Yep. And we took a year writing the, writing the programme and then, uh, and then started advertising it. Um, and you can imagine that at the very beginning, things are very, very slow. Um, but eventually we had three clients that we could work with. And I'd already checked out with probably 20 potential clients what format they would want to work in. And the answer came back two weekends um, so that we would do 100% or nine hour days, um, two weekends, and then over a period of time, we've experimented doing them two weekends apart, three weekends apart, four weekends apart, five weekends apart, and I think even six weekends apart. Um, and I think we came back to the conclusion that three to four weekends between two halves was about right, that fitted for everybody. Mm. And we've been doing that um, based on initially anger, so-called anger management, and then in a very quick period of time, we recognized that the issues involved were equally about other emotions as well. And so by 1996, um, Denise and I had constructed, Denise then became a, a working partner a year after 
um, I split from the woman that wrote the course with me. That we had a big bust up. She wanted to go and work with victims. And I said, no, we've set up to work with, with people with abusive behaviors. So we'll, we'll stick with that. And there was a, a, a charity bust up. Um, fortunately, the uh, votes went my way and we stuck with it. Um, uh, but you know, it caused a big riff. Denise came in uh, to work alongside me. Denise was- um, Denise a, knows. Denise Knowles, that's right. She's a relate counsellor, was at that time. I think either she trained a little bit before me or I trained a little bit before her. I'm not quite sure which way around it was. But all of a sudden then I needed someone to work with me. And so Denise's training in 1995 was follow my lead. OK, and obviously she followed that lead and she's still following it 25 years later. So. Um, but anyway, um, we recognise then that emotions drive behaviours. 1996, a guy pointed out that emotion precedes thought, okay, and actually directs thought. So, and the, the notion of power and control has really been dissed, I would say, by the woman that constructed the notion. Yeah. And so our, our power, our um, emotional regulation um, idea, I would say, has slowly and steadily gained credibility uh, and the emotions involved are those of trust and disgust, fear and anger, curiosity and shock and sadness and grief and joy. So, so working around those things then, that engages most people's curiosity. So between 90 and 95% of the people that start the work complete it. And that compares with the, with the accredited work which is double the length of time of ours um, and which probably gets rather less than 25% of the men only completing it. Yeah, and so just to put that into context for people watching this who, you know, I, I know you don't mean to do this, but there's a certain amount of jargon and shop talk that creeps in. All right, okay, yeah, sorry. So, yeah. so basically this, this whole area of abusive behavior domestic abuse domestic violence is really contentious because what yeah. what happens um often is that when a when when a couple with kids separate uh the kids stay with the mother and then when the father wants to see them if the mother wants to cause problems she can block access then the father his only recourse he might try other things but He's quick, he quickly discovers that if he if he uh, tries to exert any pressure on on his ex, then that will be classed as abuse and uh, bullying or something, controlling, manipulative manip manipulative behavior. So coercive and controlling behavior. Yeah, coercive. Yeah. So then, if he goes to court to um, ask for a child access, family court. Um, is, yeah. Family court. He may come up against this. Um, accusation of domestic abuse which is uh, it's an easy card to play and automatically the the judge the court and the judge and the Kafka officer are you know professionally um, bound to be very very careful and conservative in their response and also they want to cover themselves so they will they will always um, they will always err on the side of caution and uphold the 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 gap in contact while it's looked into. And so, what you just referred to is an accredited course. So, what some of these men are sent on is an accredited domestic abuse course, isn't it? And yeah. that's what you were talking about there. Yeah. And you, your course is different to a, an accredited course. Can you just go into a bit about that? Why yeah. they're different? Um, okay. Well, just to wind back a little bit. Um, this kind of almost standard practice now is that the woman goes to a solicitor and the solicitor says um, claim domestic violence and then you will get legal aid funding okay and so the woman is then in a sense encouraged to make six up to six complaints uh, well many more than six often but scaled back to six complaints and then she qualifies for legal aid okay mm -hmm. The legal aid is nothing like 
the amount of money that the solicitors would like to earn, they would probably like to earn two or three times the amount of legal uh, uh, of income, but um, but legal aid is better than nothing. And so the solicitor's interest becomes to extend the case as long as possible. Within the family, so the woman is then encouraged to make allegations. Those allegations go back to the family court and on the balance of probability, they are either found or not found. And if they're found, then the family courts tend to treat that as being that the man is guilty of whatever he's been accused of. Before that, of course, we've also got to remember that the courts, Kafkas and everybody else involved has been told that you must believe a woman, okay? And so, of course, if you must believe the woman, then the man is obviously a liar. Where's that directive come from? Is that a, a Ministry of Justice directive? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's a Ministry of Justice um, edict, but there's very clearly, it's um, something which is being put out there. You'll hear it every day. You'll have, you'll have heard it, you know, many, several times this week, in a sense. I've heard, that, I've heard it said by police and things like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's the pressure which is on them. So they, in a sense, they must believe the woman and the difficulty is that that then makes the man the liar. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, that's that's the early guts of it, and that then begins to go through the court. So when the when the mother disobeys the court's orders or ignores the court's orders, then there are very very rarely any repercussions. So she's not in in breach of court order or anything like that. She's kind of you know almost excused because she is the main carer. So that's the that's the kind of standard private family law court. Yeah. Um, the public law obviously then involves social services where there's a big threat for children to be taken away um, and put into temporary care or long term foster care or, or even adoption. And that tends to involve the mother as being seen as an inadequate mother. OK, and uh, those cases are then. Uh, fully represented but but with legal aid so both the male involved and the female involved will be uh, be able to access legal aid um, and so those cases tend to be run in a slightly different way mm. okay. also, but also in the family courts so, so and, then, and then there are criminal cases then where uh, the man has been accused of uh, of various kinds of uh, violence or abuse and coercive control has been recently taken into that, I believe. Um, although that's a little bit at the front end of the process at the moment. And then if there's a prosecution that goes into the criminal law uh, and, and then the, the, um, the fine, the, not the findings of fact, but the ballot, the, um, the guilty process is one of a uh, beyond reasonable doubt. So, yeah, which is a lot uh, more robust yeah, than that's right, yeah. on the balance yeah. of probabilities, which that's is right. most anything. It's hearsay, really, isn't it, in private law? In private often, law. It's, often, it's often hearsay, and it often comes down to the emotional appeal of, of the one person. Okay, so... Yeah, and I was talking to Calvin last week about this, right. Calvin Bell, and we were talking about the DASH reporting system, and it's yeah. it's not that it's doesn't have value at all it can be a, yeah, a valuable document yeah. in, in a you know an emergency crisis situation yeah. the problem is he said is that it gets uh used in court uh, months after the the event yeah. and it's yeah. and because no one is trained in risk assessment yeah and, and in the absence of anything else that document is is then used to sort of show that because the woman says I'm saying woman because it's often usually more yeah, often than usually it's much, much more often that way around. She, she might start, tick the box on the form that says, um, "I am uh, yes, I am very frightened of him, and yes, I I think he could kill me, and he could yeah. kill my child." Yeah, and it's a subjective. Yeah, that thing. becomes then a very alarming situation, uh, yeah. and I think I think it's also fair to say that. Um, you know, one person becomes angry, the other person becomes fearful, okay? And the difficulty is that anger is, by and large, something which can be managed, and fear is very much more difficult to manage. 
And, you know, when we look around at what's going on in politics at the moment, it's almost as if our levels of fear are being raised, you know, for all kinds of purposes, um, you know, so, you know, even I'm thinking of whether I would buy a, buy a diesel container to get an extra 50 gallons and, or 50 litres and store them in the garage, um, you know, there's a certain, you know, and, and just amazingly at the moment, there's no transport, there's no labour, there's no fuel, and it just happens to coincide with the Conservative Tory party conference up in, Burm up in Manchester, where I was Sunday, Monday and Tuesday this week. So. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Co purely coincidental, of course. Yeah. So, so I, I imagine, I mean, I'm not an expert on this, but correct me if I'm wrong. I, I imagine that the great bulk of these cases are, they're not public law, extreme child wealth, welfare cases yeah. and they're they're not criminal cases they're yeah. they're just normal families who separate and often on separation there's a sort of it's okay there's they, they separate on good terms and then what happens is the relationship deteriorates the mother blocks contact and the father doesn't know what to do and they end up in family court so i i just want to kind of um I guess talk about that in in terms of what the experience what 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 separated fathers can expect because you know most people who grow up in this country assume until they get red pilled that you know the legal system is not perfect but it's probably and logical and rational yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. not really the case is it no no, I think, I mean, there are different things that obviously at work. And one of the things we recognised early on was that maybe uh, anger is one of the precipitating events in the couple relationship. But by the time uh, the, the mainly men, and you have to remember, we also work with, uh, with women, with yeah. female abusers. So we, we tend to see both sides, obviously vastly more men than women. Um, but when the men get separated, then in many respects, all of uh, whatever they've been working for goes down the pan. And so not at all surprisingly, they then begin to feel very low, okay? They'll be into sadness and grief and loss. Um, they get into despair uh, because they, can, they can't really see any way out of this. Um, I would say quite a, quite a proportion, I have no figures to suggest it, but quite a proportion of them end up not being able to take their case through the family courts and work at the same time. So they, they tend to give up working. Um, yeah. Without the work, then they become distracted. Uh, they're, they're entirely distracted then by what's going on in the family court, which intense, you know, there's no kind of separation within themselves. They've not got a, a, another interest in their work or something like that. And so it becomes a very difficult um, period for them which I think was one of the very early recognitions that led us to really consider a much broader spectrum of emotions because uh, people need help to come to terms with that separation or with the temporary or permanent separation as well. So, yeah. And, and also that's, part of our work, so. yeah, and that's an extraordinarily dangerous place for an individual to be, isn't it? I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm um, a guy called... Um, William Collins runs a blog where oh, yeah. he explored all kinds of um, statistics, um, you know, concerning suicide and so on. But my guess is that there is a very strong correlation between men that find themselves completely isolated in the world, isolated from their families, uh, out on the streets, uh, you know, sofa surfing, all of those kinds of really quite distressing um, situations. So. Mm. yeah very a very very difficult set of uh, things to handle yeah because this is a compound effect so so there's the trauma of ruptured attachment to the child yeah there's probably the trauma of ruptured lots attachment of, to your ex-partner I mean yeah, lots of loss of the, the ex-partner yeah that's right um, and all of the promise that the relationship held in the early days yeah and then often loss of home because often it's yeah. the man who has to leave the family home yeah and then as you said if if they do enter the court proceedings, it's extremely stressful and yeah. expensive. So they they're either going to run up a massive debt, and um, 
and the stress of that and also the stress of the case or they're going to represent themselves and have that extra stress of trying yeah. to figure out how to do it right which is really hard yeah I, and, I would agree yeah and this morning for example I was uh, <laughs> talking with a, a client we're working with who was saying that a barrister for his net to represent him at the next case he can't get one under three thousand pounds plus the VAT um, and you know how many people are going to have that amount of money just to turn their hands to is that just um, for the day or is that for some casework before or as well, well I'm, that I'm not completely sure of but um, you know I, I thought that a barrister was around the 1500 quid mark I must say so but you know that was the, that was the figure he was quoting I imagine the man's gone up a lot. I just saw something today. Um, I was on Facebook and someone had, a solicitor had posted something saying that the, the number of cases has gone right up. Right through the roof. For the last couple of years. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not sure that that is actually true, but right. you know, there's been a, there's been, there is a backlog because, you know, if we go back to what Kafkas funded before the virus, they funded 909 places, okay? So if we consider that the next year there would have been 909 places and the year and most of the year after that there would have been another 400. So there was what wasn't completed of 900 plus another 1300 cases which are in Kafka's on Kafka's back burner at the moment. So that's what you know. That, when you say fund, they funded those cases, what, what do you mean? Are they... Um, if, um, if the individual in court recognises all of the findings of fact against him and agrees that all of those findings of fact are correct, then Kafkas will refer him to an accredited programme. The difficulty with the accredited programmes is that probably less than 25% of the men complete them. Okay, They are 26 to 32 weeks long. There is a very strong, I would say, radical feminist background to them. The men get pissed off by being told that they are minimizing and denying their behaviors. Uh, and those men, some of those men that do get to the end of the program, I can think of one particular uh, character, having completed the program, he was then told by the um, assessor at the accredited program, in our opinion, or in my professional opinion, Mr. X didn't make enough progress to warrant have the contact with his children. Okay, so you know, so that is the uh, yeah, that's right. It's a, a, a gut a gut grinding thing. Uh. And I think it would also be fair to say that we'd completed our work with him. Okay, and so I know the guy really pretty well, uh, and I would also say that he was one of these strong, silent men. And you need to be, you would need to be engaging with him rather than expecting him to engage with you. In a group of eight people, which was, is what our maximum size is, then you can do that. In a group of 12 to 16 people, it becomes increasingly difficult. So he would, he would have not have hidden deliberately, but he would have, you know, just not stood out because he would have, you know, been waiting to be engaged with. So, yeah. 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 So what big freedom of information said that uh, they completed 30 that they had less than 33% of midway reports so yeah so 300 and th less than 303 midway reports from which i can i would begin to deduce that less than a quarter of the men which is a historic pro um, prognosis for the courts so what i'm hearing there is that the the methodology is questionable, but the completion rates are horrendously terrible anyway. So even if it worked, yeah. it's not working because the men aren't getting through. And the men that complete it or drop out and are told that they can't have contact, what recourse do they then have to do something else to get contact? Well, a, 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 a small proportion of them will come to us for a, a kind of a second run at it. Okay. Um, but my guess is that most of them just give up. You know, that, I mean, some of them will soldier on and be reassured with the, by the fact that if they've got daughters, those daughters will almost certainly be coming back into contact with them later on in life. And if they've got sons, then there's, there's a strong probability that the, that the sons will come back for contact with them later on in life. So. 
Do you yeah. find it's more likely that the daughters will will then? The yeah, side? daughters are much more. The daughters tend to side and miss their dads uh, much more than the boys. The boys tend to side with their mums. Um, you know, for almost gender understandably understandable reasons. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Mm. Mm. So you've been working in this space for 26 years now. Yeah, 26 years. So you've seen this happen again and again and again and again. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm. pretty depressing. And so it's really depressing. What would you say to um someone a father who is stuck and they don't know what to do and um, they, they haven't well, I, I, I think there are different things first of all you know some uh, some men and i can think of probably five or six recently from you know since or during and since the the virus that have had successful outcomes from their point of view so one of the guys has actually been awarded uh, the uh, care and control of his child um, and another another guy has moved around to the position where uh, his ex-wife was wanting more children and he was trying to say well we just can't afford and support that and I think it's now two or three years later and so he's actually moved around now to saying well actually I could still be married with her because I would be quite prepared to have the extra child or children now because I've you know the, our situation has moved on um, so I don't know where that's gone. Um, and I suppose probably about 50% of the guys are, are stuck. An interesting um, comment from somebody recently was, I've kept all of the paperwork to establish for the children that I didn't leave any stone unturned uh, in my efforts to maintain contact with them. See some emotion there, David. Yeah. yeah yeah that's right because these guys go through a lot don't they i mean some yeah. of them go they have 20 30 40 50 hearings years and years and years yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think i think um six i think 67 is the highest i've heard so far and the 67 the one the guy with 67 um i think um we've got to be just a little bit uh, circumspect about what I say yeah. um, but um, it sounded very much as if his wife realized that she had cancer and that the breakup between them was involved with her cancer and her decision that their children would be placed with her family rather than with his family okay so and it seemed it certainly seemed to me that uh, that social services were in cahoots with that, uh, Kafkas were in cahoots with that. The only person that didn't know about it was the guy himself, who um, I think I think um, his ex-wife died around the Christmas period, or yeah, around the Christmas period, and he got to find out uh, in the March or April after that. By which time all of the case had just been done and dusted, and there was no going back on it. The arrangements had all been made outside his uh, outside his knowledge um, and I think he was on six, 67 or I'm, I'm not even sure that he didn't say that he'd gone beyond 67 but um, certainly was 67 cases yeah yeah and traveling from one end of the country to the other for the court court proceedings and so obviously you know had done no work in between times I think this was over three years so you know you're looking at 20 hearings a year or something like that so and spent a vast amount of his money. I think 167,000 pounds is the, uh, might be not quite right, but 160,000 pounds is the highest amount of money that I've heard that's been invested in, um, in you know, trying to achieve, trying to achieve the ends. So, yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, my, my take is that um, I think in most cases, uh, a Mackenzie friend is the best way to go. Um, families need fathers in very many um, branches provide a really good service in that direction. Um, mm. I don't know. I mean, I suppose 
the the Mackenzie friends do make some charge, but I would imagine that it's a, a very modest charge. But the support that lots of guys get from families need fathers has to be seen and heard to be believed. So um, I'm in touch with, I think, three or four particular um, families need fathers organizations. And certainly one of them, I have to delete the um, the WhatsApp communications about once a week because it threatens to engulf my phone. OK, so this is guy that raises question and gets five or six responses from the other guys that are saying, well, do this, do this, do this and don't do that. And, um, so in an enormous amount of support, you know, um, yes. goes on like that. And I also personally think that it's best for people to represent themselves. And I use the expression, uh, if you have a solicitor or a barrister, they might know the law, but they represent you. And that means that you just get asked a few questions uh, and then, you know, that the court bases its sort of emotional picture on you answering two or three questions. Whereas if you're presenting yourself, then I think they develop a much rounder picture of you as an individual. So, so I would, I would suggest as many people as possible go that go that route. Um, and there's some, you know, there's some guys around that are really very experienced with that. So, and women as well. But um, yeah, take the money away from the solicitors. Um, you know, I'm not advocating that full stop, but I think um, it's it, there's, it's certainly got merit to avoid that. Although you run the risk then of not knowing the law and of, of bumping into technical problems. But um, yeah, but if you get a, d a half decent Mackenzie friend, you can navigate that fairly well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I've I have heard, you know, in my own work with 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 dads in these situations, I've yeah. I've heard of, I know people that have spent seventy thousand, a hundred thousand, and they've not been very impressed with the. Um, the service no, that's right. At yeah, all. I, I think they, you know, they're. I mean, whether that comes down to it being the solicitor or the barrister is another matter. Um, but in terms of what they're going to get back for their money, you know, the, the odds are stacked against them. You know, you, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't, well, I don't know what, the, I don't play roulette or anything like that, but, you know, you wouldn't be putting your money on the odds of coming away with what you're looking for. Let's put it like that. I think there's another interesting thing, though, which uh, bugs quite a lot of guys. Um, and that is that they don't get equal um, shared custody, you know, so they're often getting sort of alternate weekends and two days a week. And somebody was pointing out fairly recently that, of course, that really amounts to about half of the time. If you take children that are in school, for example, then by the time you take out the amount of time that they're in school, then two days and alternate weekends is actually not a bad, um, not a bad proportion of of quality contact time, the, the way people like to um, mm. uh, describe it. So I, I would say, you know, uh, two, two good meetings a week or two outside, outside contact centers, of course, but, uh, uh, but then a, step, a series of stepping stones are really needed to um, get back to overnight kind of contact. Um, but yeah, um, I think one of the other things, of course, is that working with, female abusers as well is really quite an interesting thing and in within the group dynamic um we had a you know i can only describe her as a lovely young woman that took part in a course maybe three courses ago and when the guys on that particular course saw exactly the stress that she was in 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 the similar circumstances so she had their circumstances in a way and they couldn't help but recognize that uh, that the stresses were exactly the same for her as they mm. were for themselves. And I think that helped a number of them to recognise that that pursuing the matter um, didn't necessarily help. You know, give it a try by, by all means. But, um, you know, and, and once the stress of the family court, the battle of the family court has passed, then I strongly suspect that many, many um, parents or parents with the main custody of the child actually relax their thing. So you go into the you go into the amphitheater of the family court 
and then it becomes a battle between the two warriors. Adversarial. There. It's just yeah, one, that's right. There's only one story. There's only space for one story. Yeah, one there's story. only one winner out of it as yeah. well. As book, yeah. yeah, yeah. And of course, the children lose. Would be my uh, every time. Yeah. yeah, every time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah. So, yeah, I think certainly um, Mackenzie Friends is the root, and even if you. Even if you have a solicitor or a barrister, I think it's a good idea to have the support of a Mackenzie friend because there are barristers and uh, and solicitors that will take you for a ride. You know, they they yeah you know, you you'll, you'll get played for the next six minutes on the um, yeah on the thing. So. And what about you know? I mean, families need fathers is brilliant for practical advice, but what about yeah. the other piece, which is emotional support? and um, get um through. i think i think well i think that's that's where there is a lot of um a lot of need still because um the the really good mackenzie friend is kind uh, is kind of gearing the guy up to go to court with the facts okay the court doesn't want to hear emotion from men <laughs> they'll they'll tolerate it from women and swing with it but they don't want to have it from men. And of course, so many men have got the story that they've got to tell. They've got to get the story off their chest. And I would say, I mean, one of the guys that I really have got a lot of time for as a Mackenzie friend, he says, no, chop, chop, chop. Don't want to hear that. I just want the facts, the facts, the facts. And oh, I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Quite, he brutal. Through... He's quite brutal in his way. Yeah. But, but it's coming he... from a place of love. You can see. Yeah, that's, that is exactly right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't believe it if you heard him. But um, I think I think that's exactly right. OK, yeah, we're talking about the same person. By the same yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So, so, yeah. yeah. So the emotional piece is this. Maybe this is where some men kind of fall through the cracks a bit because I think that's right. It's all very well getting your ducks in a row, but then yeah. Yeah. how do you sleep at night and how yeah, and right. how do you down regulate your nervous system and so yeah. on, you know, yeah. that stuff. Yeah, that, I think that's exactly right. And I mean there are I think maybe the Zoom courses and things like that have uh, begun to improve the situation. Um because the, the help for men is just so far and wide between that you know the opportunity to take part in anything local to where you live is, is virtually nil, out, perhaps outside of London. Maybe some of the big cities have got some support. But I think the you know these the uh, whole of the change from Zoom to WhatsApp and these kind of Skype type meetings, yeah, I think yeah. that's probably helped a lot. Um, yes. Finding it as another, maybe that's something which we ought to be doing as well as you know kind of producing a a, a resource center for um yeah that might be an idea yeah yeah I, I worked with some guys earlier this year on 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 my course and they were yeah. very glad to have found something that was yeah. just for them basically yeah and that's a few right. of them yeah. said they'd reached out and got support other from, from other yeah. therapists but it wasn't really it's not quite that's right it's not necessarily quite on beam but i think these other organizations have got to start uh, learning what kind of support is needed okay so yeah. i can think of i can um the mankind uh, stuff for example i was listening to that so that's for male victims essentially um although i would go as far as to say there is no there's very there are very few clear cut cases of a victim and an abuser, or the perpetrator is the word they like to use. There's very little which is clear cut in that. Most people are, yeah. you know, so, I, yeah. I wanted to say actually, because I did your course yeah. in a few years ago, maybe 29 yeah, four, years, five years or something and like. um, I, I, was, I was really confused at the time. I didn't know what to make of what was happening to me. Yeah. Um, and what I got from it, it was it was incredibly deep and and um, moving and emotional and very intense. I mean, like after each day, I would just be comatose. Yeah. 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 But no, but I did get some really good insights into the dynamics of my how my relationship had been. And it yeah. brought up a lot of. Um, kind of tenderness towards myself and my ex 
yeah 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 Yeah. so it was it was really helpful for me to kind of get that nuanced understanding of what i was in the midst of because it's extraordinarily balance or yeah yeah. because i couldn't when i was in it up until that point i just all i could do was get drawn into this adversarial thing about and it's always on emails or you know or text it's usually emails of just you, you feel attacked and then you feel like you have to kind of respond and and argue the toss about every single point and then that it just it's just all this content going back and left, forward and left brain stuff isn't it left brain stuff detail yeah it's detail just so unrelational brain. and yeah and in the end it all just looks it doesn't help it just gets worse in my yeah. experience you know the more you defend yourself and it just yeah that's right yeah yeah no i think i think you know as i'm saying it's kind of left brain stuff which goes into minute detail doesn't it and everything has got to be fought over and yeah right brain stuff begins to look at bigger pictures and um and you know and where where things are happening and i think that's something which uh one of the things which uh, helps the guys, although an- another well, another of the guys I was talking with this morning was talking about some of the strategies which we train in, and and uh, his he's with a different partner now, and um, he was saying that the partner says, "Oh, you're using that strategy again." And <laughs> said to him, yeah, that's right. Oh, is that the eye different. contact one? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Eye contact. Yeah, yeah. Get get down on the same level. And uh, yeah, that's right. You got yeah. it over. Yeah. And uh, so I was saying, yeah, you've got to learn to mix it up because otherwise, you know, once you get the once you get the strategy worked out and you can employ it when you need it, then the next problem is then that a partner then begins to um, begins to counter the strategy. And um, yeah. after 25 years, my wife is getting quite good at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because what I noticed was one of the strategies is, and this we say strategy. It's 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 a way of. Of interacting, uh, yeah, of interacting. Yeah, of right. establishing a connection again, really. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah. what can happen when things get so polarised is, well, when the relationship is still happening, there's the eye contact stops. Yeah. And, and, uh, the emotion and of disgust clicks in. It kicks in. And then, you know, there's no, how was your day? My my day was, you know, da 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 it's, yeah. it's just this kind of, like, psychic guillotine comes down. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. and people can live like that for quite a while. Some people can live like that forever. Yeah. And and so one of the things you taught me on the course was tell the other person how you're feeling. You know, yeah. if you feel like what they've what they're doing, what they've just said to you or done to you really yeah. hurts, then tell them it hurts. Yes. Yeah, so started, right. started trying yeah. to do that, but it definitely, yeah, might might have been a case of uh bolting the door after the locking the stable door after yeah. the bolted but but I, I really understood all of that and yeah i suppose i wanted to say to you know anyone watching this video that you know th- there can be so much shame around a relationship mm-hmm. ending especially when you've got a child because you feel like this wasn't the plan no that's right and your job I, your job is to provide for that child as a man you know that's top yeah. and bottom of it and most very many men don't see much further than that i'm afraid but uh, yeah and yeah and to to, yeah as a man to give yourself some time and invest in in understanding more about what what's happening for you and maybe what what's happening with the dynamic with your ex is is a really worthwhile investment and that could be with a course like yours yours is so it's two weekends, um, yeah. really intense. Yeah. And a, you say the four four week gap in between. Can't remember what you said. Yeah, that. Yeah, I mean we've we've been down to a two week gap with the with the virus because oh, yeah. the rules and regs were changing so fast that to yeah. go for a four weeks, so much God knows what might have happened in between time. Yeah. Um, but we're back to working every you know four weeks now. And that I found that r- works really well for me. Uh, and then you know, there's I do a course which is three three months, and it's, yep. it's got a group session and a one to one session every week for twelve weeks. So yep. that's totally different. That's online, so it's a completely different format. But yep. 
and I don't know well, how much. I think that's dead useful as well. And yeah, you know, it maybe needs to, you know, it maybe need to extend on beyond that as well. Uh, well yeah, some of them, good. quite a few of them carry on actually one to one with yeah. me. But, yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know how much stuff there is out there for men in this situation. But no, I think I think it's you know it's getting to you know it's like all of these things. It just takes time, time and effort, and you know, to, and focus to begin to get that information together. But I think I think it's you know it's becoming needed. Uh, yeah. When you look at when you look at the three hundred and seventy five women's aid associated organisations, all of whom have got probably in round figures, you know, a million pounds each with which to run. And you look at, um, well, I would say mankind, was, I don't know how much money they get, but maybe 60 or 70,000 pounds a year. And mm. there might be one or two others. Uh, families need fathers, I don't think, get any uh, any government support as far as, well, they might get a bit, but um, it'll be trivial, absolute peanuts. Um, so, you know, so when you come down to it, outside that, I can't find many more uh, men's uh, organizations around. But, you know, that's the that's the guts of it. it was one of the reasons why i was up in birmingham protesting about equality for men for this weekend this last weekend so. what was the event there it was what was conservative it? party conference yeah, so. yeah 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 i've, the, I've heard yeah. noises that they might actually be quite interested they did the all, par all party parliamentary Committed, group, yeah, committed. group. That's APPG. That's right. Yeah. Um, on men and boys. So there's yeah. noises. There's good noises. Yeah, there, there is progress being made now, but from a you know from a very very low, um, very yeah. very low point. Yeah. And the, I mean, I've, uh, just um, half a second. Um, uh, I think, I think I've got oops, one or two of the um, of the leaflets from what we were giving out uh, up there. So, yeah. men, does that show up or is men that- Men are good, up? yeah. Men are good. So that was, that was one, something about masculinities and stuff. So that was being given out to um, passing right. members of parliament and every other, Tom, Dick and Harry and um, something else about woke because woke and radical feminism seem to be pretty much um, associated with one another yeah and then and then um let's just see which way along so this was um an oh wait a minute make sure i get it in the right place so this is just pointing out the different the different things that men experience so yeah 72% of personal income taxes paid by men. 90% of patent of patents for inventions, men. Uh, what was it? 68% of small business owners, men. 60, 69% of police officers, men. 96% of builders and electricians, men. 99% of mechanics, men. 98% of HGV drivers, men. Okay, 82% of farmers, men. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, just beginning to break down some of the um, things and then really quite a complex diagram. I've not really got my head around that one. Okay. 97% okay. of workplace deaths, men. Yeah. 90%, 95% of men in prison, uh, of people in prison, men. Yeah. Yeah, so some really quite hard hitting statistics and uh, be interesting to see if that has any, any effect. Yeah, and that, I appreciate your campaigning, but that is one of the distressing elements and it well it was in my experience but i've seen it in other men yeah of you, you think you're living in a world that's rational and fair and there's equality and then you sort of go through this and you discover that that's a complete portal, lie. and you're suddenly in this yeah completely other other reality and and the the, the really alarming thing is you start trying to talk about it with people and people don't believe you because apparently men you know have, are privileged and there's a patriarchy and all of this stuff yeah 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 but yeah. it's the other way around well that's right as i started off by saying 4.7 percent of domestic abuse was attributable to women only 4.7 percent the uh, latest statistics here 
uh, are talking about bi-directional violence and scoring that up around the 70%, the 70 percent, uh, yeah, 60 to 75 percent. So depending on okay. your, your understanding. So, you know, for these, um, for these, for the women that are frightened, rigid, 60 to 75 percent of them manage to fight back really quite, um, quite satisfactorily. So mm. that's how frightened they are. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but fortunately, the research is beginning to come through now. And whereas, uh, whereas in the past, the media have been kind of uh, absolutely fixed against having anything which presents something closer to reality, that is beginning to happen now. So there, are, you begin to hear men being the victims of domestic abuse and and right. things like that. So been on. Um, you know, been on the on the soaps um, and and so on. So that message yeah. is beginning to get across, but uh, it's still you, a long time. You you featured in a BBC Panorama documentary where it was still a little bit uh, oh, yeah, yeah. skewed, though, wasn't it? The way yeah, it was pretty really skewed. Yeah, it was a bit disappointing in the end. The um, yeah. but uh, you know, the difficulty is that the Violence Against Women and Girls Initiative, okay, uh, or strategy. That has kind of grabbed everything, and so the only thing which exists media-wise and polit politically-wise is violence against women and girls. And the violence isn't necessarily violence, and ag against women and girls is absolutely fair. Although girls tend to be more, much more abused by their mothers than they are by their fathers. Okay, boys tend to be rather more abused by their fathers than their mothers, but they both, both the children. Uh, end up by and large placed with their mothers. I think about 92% of, of cases or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, really quite shocking things. And, uh, but yet the statistics have now moved in that direction so that more than 35% of domestic abuse is attributable to women. Okay. 60% of domestic violence is bi directional, 60% plus. Yeah. So, so that, that leaves quite, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. So I, I, I think the, the researchers are beginning to say that domestic violence is more or less equal. So yeah, it could be a triumph for empowering women and girls. <laughs> yeah, I saw something that I don't know whether it was from you or somewhere else, but there was there's been over two hundred pieces of research in in Western countries, and and there's a strong correlation between the kind of empowerment of women and the uh <laughs> and the amount of women on men violence and abuse yeah so yeah. basically the more liberated the country the more equal abuses yeah that's, yeah we, i think, I think sense, that's right I, guess. I, think, yeah. I think it was either 450 or 650 pieces of research that were oh that many okay oh no, yeah 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 it wasn't you know it wasn't i mean not that 200 pieces of research is a trivial amount but in fact it was two or three times that so and these are meta, they're like meta studies, aren't they? Yeah, that's, yeah, meta, yeah, yeah. That's right. Meta analyses. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think maybe one of the things to take away from this conversation is that um, if you're going into court, there's a very real possibility that you can lose and not only not get to see your child in the short to medium term, but get. Yeah. And just to correct you, we've got to put that round the other way because men have got no rights to their children, okay, by and large, and men's grand men's parents, so the child's grandparents have got no rights, but the child does have rights to a family life, okay. And so everything needs to be focused around to the child's rights to have contact with his father or his mother, and the child's rights to have contact to the grandparents of both sides, okay. So. And it needs to be children first, all of the time. Right. So if if you're a dad and you're representing yourself in court, yeah. um, you don't say I want to see my children because yeah. that will just be that's just you being a selfish. They don't person. care. No one cares. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm here because the child will be missing the contact with our daughter, or our son will be missing the contact with their dad. And uh, I mean, as as um, you would have heard. You go into court with a photograph of the child or children, and then you refer to that all of the time to make damn sure 
that the children are represented and that there's a photograph of them in the court. And if necessary, I think, you know, maybe it's too, too cheeky and a step out of line, but I think I would be showing that to the judge just to remind the judge that this is about the children and it's not about you and it's not about the mother. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah. So the child has a right to contact with both parents and yeah. both paternal and maternal grandparents. And Unless there's a really good reason for that not to happen. Yeah. yeah. And if you're going into that arena, yeah, yeah you, you might lose. You, and if you lose, you might get told that there's nothing now that you can do because you were given this opportunity to go on a accredited course. It's accredited probably by respect, which is absolutely yeah. yeah. Uh, is it a charity? What is yeah, it? Yeah, respect is a, a charity, a sort of um, I suppose medium sized charity with about a thousand one one point three million pounds a year income, mainly paid for by the Home Office. So yeah, and it and, it, it and Kafkas kind of farms out work and it, it yeah, they kind of subcontract the accreditation to respect. Yeah. Uh, and the difficulty is that either they don't know or they won't hear that respect is not really interested in delivering work with abusers. I'm not that they, they don't deliver work anyway, but they accredit the work. So, and what they accredit is the power and control, which the creator, Ellen Pence, recognized 1999 was not appropriate for the majority, vast majority of cases. Um, and when you, when you read the research uh, delivered by Fangham Debonair for the male victim, the male victim of abuse helpline, they are all considered to be prospective abusers. That's the starting point. So um, male men that claim to be male victims are, man, are basically seen in the first instance as potential manipulators. Uh, and the other very interesting thing that, um, that Miss Devonair was saying back in 2006 was that, of course, we wouldn't want to encourage women to stay with a man that's undertaken a course because they don't know what the outcomes of that course will be. And it might encourage a woman to stay with a man if they get referred to a programme. Okay. And, and my take on that, that is, I mean, it's, that's about as sick as you can get. So the accreditor or somebody representing the accreditor really saying, we've got no faith in the programs which we accredit and that that might take a woman into greater danger okay yes and i how how conflicted is that um and it takes me back to sandra hawley's original statement violent men are all the same and they won't change you know that that was the rigidity of of her view and that i would say is probably the underlying view of respect and the accreditation process and of course, the real difficult thing about that is the individual couple that are involved at the time. That's one thing. The difficulty is that the man or the abuser will likely go on to the next relationship. And, and there's a good chance that they will have learnt, you know, the very hard way from the court processes about, you know, how to behave themselves better in the next relationship. But if they haven't, then the opportunities for learning that in front of the next relationship are virtually nil so and and that's the bit which troubles me um because yeah. you can then see that person a doesn't learn uh, new new skills or new strategies to be able to move into a new relationship and then goes on and reproduces the same stuff in the next relationship so it's mm -hmm. not it's not it's not certain you know because people are capable of changing all the way down the line but um, but you know there's quite a risk yeah that's what your work is really focusing on is is getting in personal insights understanding the dynamic yeah. of, of yeah. this unhealthy for, yeah for for past for what went wrong in the past relationship and how that needs to be corrected for all the way back to you know if it's me all the way back to my attachment start as a child growing up and yeah. how did i learn to attach yeah 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 i don't know if if I, I might not have sent you it, but there's really quite a nice cartoony style thing which explains the attachment theory in really very simple terms with the kind of potential outcomes. I'll send you that afterwards. Oh yeah, thank you. But, you know that I think that's very very useful um, for people to see. You know that for example, I think it was a there were a six year old, a four year old, a two year old, and the one year old, and the effects of the um, difficulties that I mean it was focused on a on a, a woman whose husband died who then 
became the sole okay. provider. Um, so there was, you know, this. Uh, so it's it's quite neutral in its uh, in its yeah. presentation, but it just highlights the different developmental stages of the children at the time when catastrophe happened in their family, and the likely outcomes of that. And of course, most of that can also be applied to domestic abuse cases as well. So mm. good. So yeah, just to cap off uh, around everything, off, and thanks for all of this, David. It's, yeah, it's very, very rich. Uh, you know, you've been. You've been doing great work for a long time in in a <laughs> we need people to be able to take over and do it as well because i'm 73 and i'm getting past it yeah well i i i want to help out as much as i can in this space yeah. maybe i can help yeah. point but... well, bristol i mean how can you get to bristol to deliver our work in bristol <laughs> yeah that's the thing i mean it's finding yeah. ways that work but yeah. yeah but we'll talk about that but yeah just to leave the people watching with with something maybe like tangible. So, you know, there's this very real risk when you enter court of getting caught up in the, whatever the solicitor and the barrister wants. So try not yeah. to do that, try and represent yourself. Yeah. The other thing is if, if the idea of, you know, you going on a remedial course as a, as a perpetrator, domestic abuse perpetrator starts coming up, then beware because an accredited courses are, involve you having to basically say yes i am a perpetrator and yes i'm guilty of all these things yeah. otherwise you won't be allowed to complete it and yeah. even if you do complete it if you don't uh make the right noises the, all the way through, yeah bow and curtsy at every opportunity yeah and yeah. and just be aware that those courses are based on what you call the power and control wheel it's the Duluth yeah. model by ellen yeah. pence which basically conceptualizes men as perpetrators and she yeah. said herself i've never really come across the that guy in all yeah the i mean i think they i think those guys are there but in very small proportions yeah it's a low base rate isn't it it's, yeah. it's really tyrannical abusive men who yeah. control um but there are other courses so like your course david you know these got anyone watching can look up your course it's temper yeah. domestic violence charity That's right. and um you know you can self-refer to things like that yeah. and you will do real real work real you'll learn some very useful stuff the difficulty is whether kafkas will accept it you know that and the kafkas will advise the judges so what we do say is when you get a report from us that you must make sure that the report gets to the judge as well as to the kafkas officer because the kafkas officer has got the potential to just um you know, forget or lose it to diss it or lose it or yeah. whatever and and maybe it's an idea to preempt all of this by doing a court the course before it even gets that far down the road. So you can say, look, I'm, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm really upset by all these allegations, but I wanna, yeah. I wanna at least investigate and see yeah. if I am guilty yeah. of something here. I, I think that's right. I mean, I think early intervention is absolutely the key to all of this, rather than getting you know hung about for years before you can actually start and do anything so, yeah yeah <sighs> so there we go very heavy topic thank you so yeah. much Good okay time. yeah Thanks. nice talking with you sorry i got upset in the middle of it i'm apologizing. oh no don't apologize i i, I really welcome that I, 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 under, I, under, I understand that but i'm just thinking of the other four guys that have got to see this sad old git that um that's <laughs> that, beautiful that's it's really yeah. nice yeah. to see that thank you okay nice um, talking to you, Zach. yeah you too take care <laughs> See you soon.